We just want to first off start off by welcoming you guys. We had over 160 people register, and that to me is something so cool to celebrate um, because each of you carved out time tonight to say, I care deeply about this topic of exploring moving out to be the church, and you took the time to do this. Becky was leading a move out kind of interest video on Zoom. We had heard about it, my wife and I, and we decided to hop in and kind of see what it was all about. As you're thinking about your next faithful step, there might be some of these teams to check out just so that you can grow in understanding what these move out teams are doing. We were pretty inspired by a gentleman down in Detroit. He was making some care packages for the homeless community. How many people we can help understand that they are loved and they are known and that they are seen. This kind of struck a chord with us. I mean, we know we had a pretty big homeless population up here and we were wondering how we, or what we could do to, to kind of provide that need or fill that gap. My great grandparents, and they had a very large city plot, most of which was garden throughout my childhood. Did a lot there, but I actually ran an indoor gardening supply center for seven years, and that's where my big interest was drawn. I mean, I, I just loved growing anything and everything I could. I said, hey. We have a ton of land up here at Kensington. It's all over the church. Why not put some of it to use? And we ran the idea by a couple leadership and started from there. We did that and then all of a sudden, you know, funding came along and a lot of interest from the congregation and volunteers wanted to get involved. And yeah, it just, it just kind of took off. I didn't have any specific spot around here. I know we have a large plot of land here. I didn't even know where the boundaries were at the time. So um, I was expecting it to be in one of these big fields, but they are put to use quite often. And, and that I didn't even know we owned. So when he pointed that out, I said, hey, that's, that's great. It's right by the well house. So irrigation was pretty simple to hook up to. And it was a large plot down there that was just unused. We had a big grant from, from downstate come up for the fencing and for the initial setup of the garden. Because of the COVID situation, lumber prices were escalated. We had a bunch of issues we were running into there. It was gonna cost a lot more than we had initially planned. And, and so uh, they said, hey, how about we gather a handful of guys and do this ourselves? So that was our first kind of group of, of volunteers to put up the fence. None of us knew what we were doing. So <laughs> we found a guy locally that did, luckily, and he came and helped us out, had the equipment to do it. From there, yeah, it, it just spiraled when it came to donations. Um, the LeBlanc family here, they donated a tractor. They donated their greenhouses up here, which is not too far away, to get the seeds started and the crops started one year. Um, yeah, it was just an outpouring from there. My initial thoughts were, you know, small plot, we're gonna grow some food, we're gonna be able to deliver that food to those um, in need and maybe, you know, share a little about why we're doing it and what we're here for and, and why we're kind of pouring into them. It didn't end up going that way, you know, God had different plans for us. So uh, Tanya came up to us and said, hey, have you heard of this coalition? And I, I didn't at the time, I'm like, no. She's like, you need to look into it. Food Rescue of Northwest Michigan, is a program of Goodwill Northern Michigan. Our mission is to increase access to healthy food and to reduce food waste in the five counties. So we do that by picking up from farms, uh, grocery stores, bakeries, and delivering that food out to pantries and meal sites. And a big part of that is also these community gardens. At first we thought we were gonna have to process all this stuff in ourselves, so I was asking her, I'm like, we're gonna need to get licensed in the kitchen here. Do we need to get, you know, jump through some hoops? Like, how's this gonna work out? She said, no, 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 don't worry about any of that. Just pick it out of the ground, shake the dirt off and bring it to us in buckets. We'll take care of the rest. So that was a good relief for, you know, all of us. It made, made our job a lot easier. And then, yeah, from there we just said, hey, we wanna grow for you specifically. We wanna grow for these people. So you tell us what the easiest will be, what you're gonna need and where we can fill that gap. Kensington reached out to us and said that they had a garden. Um, and asked uh, what produce was needed in the community, how they could be of help, and we were off and running. The Kensington produce comes into our warehouse and then it's distributed out mainly in Benzie and Leona County. So we try and keep the food in that community as well. It's great to be able to deliver the food and to tell them, hey, this produce came from Kensington Church. This came from their garden. And that, like, that's an important spark. People want to know where their food is coming from and to know that it comes from a local source um, and someone that they know, where they know where it is. The relationship that we've gained with, with Food Rescue and the crew over there has been really good. It's just been growing throughout the past couple of years. 
initially we said, hey, we want to get face to face with these people that need, need this, these food, this food. And we want to talk with them, we want to share with them. Jumping in with the Food Coalition, that kind of put a middleman in between us and them. So we don't get that face to face connection. But that's where I really did feel that God spoke to us about what this ministry was going, where he wanted to take it. And that was just, hey, listen, these are the relationships that you need to build. And since then, it's just been great. I mean, we've had 20, 30 volunteers out of the congregation show up at random. Um, we've gotten to know quite a few of them pretty closely, and uh, it's just, just been great. About once a week, we come up and just started really from the beginning where we worked the ground up and planted the seeds and then covered them back up with dirt and patiently waited. Our last year, our potato harvest, we had a great, beautiful day for it. We uh, did it right after our service here on a Sunday. And I think we had probably 40 or 50 people, kids, adults, everyone, families everywhere. It was just an awesome time. There were tons of kids there and it's great. They'd have a playpen out there and all the littles would be in the playpen. But it made it fun too, to just run around the garden and sometimes we'd bring our puppy and it's just a whole like community family fun event. Once you get here, it's just like a light switch, you know, it just, it just, you completely feel fulfilled, you feel invigorated, and it just adds purpose, you know what I mean? It gives, it feels great to do something outside of ourselves. We have a shed waiting to be built over there, so that's the next step. That was a big um, grant we were given there. Uh, we need a storage shed put up real. We're hoping to do that before the weather hits this year. The first year was about a third of the total plot. This year it was two thirds, and we have an extra third we haven't put to use yet. Given the tractor and some other equipment that's been donated to us, we hope to expand into that all next year um, and just grow more. So, I mean, that's really, that's where we're at right now. When you give it up, and when, you know, again, it was overwhelming at one point, and I didn't know what I was doing. I know I'm not a farmer, I'm a gardener, so <laughs> it was just a lot to take on and a lot to kind of throw on the plate. And, and I had no choice but to just, you know, give it up to God and just say, hey, take us where you want to go because I I don't know what I'm doing exactly. <laughs> and I think the biggest take is that just when, when you do that, it's all, he's, he's going to take care of it. You know, when you're when you're doing work for him, when you're doing work for the kingdom and you're you're working um, and, and allowing him to lead, it's, it's, it's going to fall into place. And it does without any question. And it has, so. I love Marcus's response. He just says, I'm not a farmer, man, but I just did what God asked me to do. And it's so cool because he said, and God's taking it where he wants to go and he's making a huge impact. So thank you, Marcus. And I love that at all of our campuses, we get to move out. We get to listen to God's voice and move out and make an impact in the world. Like at Clarkson, we get an opportunity to move out in our special needs community and be a blessing to them and let them participate in our programming. Uh, and all across all of our campus, so many different things, right? And it's really not just all across our campuses, but really throughout the entire history of Kenzie this has been a part, a core part of who we are in our DNA. And it's one of the reasons why I absolutely love this community. Every time that God has nudged you, you have been so incredibly courageous and humble in saying yes to that and just engaging with the community in all the ways that you have. And none of this would have been able to happen Not without your generosity and without your partnership. And so we are so incredibly grateful for you. Totally. So thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts, because this is something that we all get to be part of and get to do. We get to move out together. So, and you know what's coming up? Just Thanksgiving. Days. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, y'all. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Turkey for all. There you go.